Welcome back to the unofficial Squarespace Entrepreneur Podcast. Today I'm here with Paige Brunton of pagebrunton.com. Um, it's still pagebrunton.com, right? It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm really excited to have this talk. Um, Paige has a course launch coming up and um, this isn't her first course launch. So I'm very interested to one, catch up and then two, uh, learn something from myself because I've yet to launch a course at the scale of Paige that she's been doing for the past like six or seven years. Um, so I'm here to learn and hopefully y'all can learn with me. So um, Paige, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely thrilled. I love talking about both being a web designer and the like course business. So I'm here for all the questions. Awesome. Um, so we were just talking about like Square Secrets as a brand. Um, could you like catch us up to just your bit for someone who's brand new to you, um, mm -hmm. catch us up to like your business, what you do and, and what that's all about. Absolutely. Okay. So I started off as a web designer quite a few years ago and I didn't intend to become a website designer, but I had moved abroad to a country where I didn't speak the language and then quickly realized first I was like, oh, I'll just learn the language. Then I went to library school for three months and was like, nope, that's going to be like a year long project <laughs> before I can work in this language. So instead I decided to do something on the internet. And so what I did was I created a website business. I built a blog on Squarespace before. So that was like the extent of my web designer education. But I was like, whatever, this is my best shot. So I literally taught myself how to build a website business. It was not an easy ride to figure that out. I was very alone and very overwhelmed by figuring that whole situation. Like you have to, one, get good at the website building skills. Then you have to get good at running a business and find clients and do marketing and the admin and the legal and all that stuff. Um, in the end, I did figure it out and I started getting so many clients that I was like, cool, how do I scale this business? And I was like, I'd seen agency was an option, template shop was an option, and the course was an option. And so I chose course. And so I created the course, which you mentioned, Square Secrets. And that one teaches people like how to build amazing websites on Squarespace, really go beyond like the basics and really make something like exceptional. Um, and then when I ran that course, I noticed that all my students were asking me questions, not about like, how do I drop this block here or there on Squarespace or make this design look like this, but they were asking me questions about how I ran the business. And so that's when I realized like, oh, they want to know how to be a website designer, how to make money off of this, um, how to build a real job off this. And so that's when I created my second course, Square Tickets Business. And that's all about like the back end of running a web designer business. Um, and yeah, that's what I've done for the last good number of years now. <laughs> So, all right. So you might not realize it, but you literally just laid out like a uh, flow chart of the like Squarespace career potential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if, um, if there was like a Squarespace designer, you know, like track or whatever, um, you kind of just laid out like these are the paths you can take. And if you take mm -hmm. this path, bling, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> if you take this path. So um, I want to go back to something that you said that you might not realize, but is probably the most important step in the path. Mm -hmm. And that was you had to figure something out. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm emphasizing this because I've learned for myself that the distinction between those who thrive in this landscape and those who don't are the ones who do. They figure something out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And usually in the beginning, it's like beginning, it's often necessity. It's like, I need to figure something out for myself. Um, and then there's like a looking around of like, okay, who else can I figure out something for? Mm -hmm. um, and then that grows. And then it's like, oh, there's questions about what I'm doing. Let me answer those. So um, let's just go back to the figuring stuff out part. Like it as a, as a teacher, cause you're an educator, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of students who come through your courses. Um, what this what defines like a student who you can tell is going to be successful and one that is probably going to struggle or like not follow through? Are mm -hmm. there any like key determining characteristics? Yep. First one by far um, is that determination, because I think truly like I wouldn't consider myself for a lot of like I know a lot of highly successful entrepreneurs. It's not like they have insane intelligence or anything like that. that's not the thing that tends to set them apart. I don't find it's really like, I am going to figure this out. And I think that I was in a bit of a 
blessing slash curse at the very, very beginning of like, I had literally no option. I couldn't even go work at Starbucks like that because you would have had to speak the language. And so like there, that was pretty much the only thing I could do. Um, And so I think that determination, whether that's you got laid off by a job or you, I don't know. I had one student who came to a Q&A call once. She's like, okay, I took the course and I'm going to launch this. I'm graduating at the end of the like month. And I'm going to just do this. I'm not going to apply for any other jobs. I'm just going to do that. And I was like, okay, well, what? okay. Yeah. And she did it like absolutely very successfully. And so it's like that kind of a mindset. I think it's like, oh, I'll just try this or I'll dabble or I'll see blah. That's yeah. the thing where they could still be successful, but it's definitely a much longer road. Yeah. Um, then the other things which I think do help to be, if you want to go from like, okay, from just like, I have a good business running, I make good money to like, I am the top of the game. I think that the difference there is one, niche or two, incredible design skills. It's one of those two things. Um, I actually have a video coming out in, actually, I don't know when this gets released. Um, sometime in October, I just like literally was recording it the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about like the two ways to find a six figure niche. And I think that is like highly interesting for anyone who's Check trying that to- out yeah figure that out yeah. um because i've noticed that through like thousands of students like the ones who are like really charging like higher prices and really doing super well um it's either the incredible design skills which i think can be learned and don't take that to don't take that to think oh well my designs are not the best right now yeah. like there are many ways that you can be very successful that is one path and that's also something which can be improved on my designs at the beginning compared to now are two completely different ball games so yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> So, all right, um, the point that you just made about, like, the niche. Niche is, like, a bad word nowadays. I don't know mm. if you realize this. but Oh, like, really? Yeah, <laughs> and, well, in the sense that, like, I think there's a lot of misconstruing around, like, what that is or what that means. So mm. someone who is, like, high high potential or, um, you know, like, just has a lot of things that they're interested in, and it mm. seems like a limited path or it seems like, um I mean this was my experience so yep. it was like oh if I'm like niche then like I won't be known for all my greatness elsewhere and like mm-hmm. people will think I'm just like this one thing and I'm more than that and I don't want to be <laughs> like <laughs> like I remember I used to be a videographer on the side when I was like a, a engineer and a friend of mine when he when I told him I was going to be like just going off on my own he was like maybe you should SEO your website for um, New Jersey, you know, videographer or something like a, a real niche down thing that mm. now I uh, makes perfect sense to me. But then I was like, no, why would I do that? That's so uncreative. It's so like, it's a label. It's like, it's not, I'm not trying to be put in a box. So I think there's that idea that a niche is like a box and that it, it won't work, or maybe they've tried. Mm. I don't know what trying is. Um, and it hasn't worked what is a niche? Like, how do you Mm. define niche? Um, Because I I think there's a lot of different ways you can niche, which is why it's such a wonderful thing to do. Yep. Okay. So ways you can niche, you can niche into an industry, you can niche into a style, you can niche into a like very highly specific offering or mix of offerings, let's say. Um, You can niche into a location, all those sorts of things. Um, Now, in terms of the question of it feels limiting. Believe me, I know. Yes, I have literally done the same thing on the internet for like seven years, eight years, whatever it is, now, like a long time. And so, and there is, I am, I have a whole person and life outside of just what I do at work. But if you just saw me on the internet, that's pretty much like mostly it. Um, now I can say that I am working on expanding from a niche. I think that once you like own and dominate like one niche, you can definitely expand into a greater niche. Um, I will also say this, you can be very successful without a niche. I don't think that you have to have it. I think again, coming back to like, if you want to be like the top of the game in terms of like website designers, then niche really helps or incredible design skills. Like it tends to be one of the two, or I don't know, like the most insanely amazing marketing and you just are like a TikTok star or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but in terms of it feeling like, let me say this. So there, I think when people who are very experienced in business go to create new businesses, they make a very highly specific offer. They make a very highly specific, like 
person are doing it for. They make one package, which makes the process so easily, which makes the marketing so easy and all those things. Um, and when people are newer to business, they're like, I can offer you all these 57 things. Um, but if I have like one very specific problem, say for example, if I'm like, okay, well, I don't know where all my sales are coming from. And I don't know what like is the best marketing channel. If I'm doing these 17 things, which one I should focus on, which one I should cut. I don't want someone who's like kind of ish knows Google mm -hmm. analytics. It's like, I want the expert who knows how to set up like tracking dashboards. That's right. what I want. And so the other thing, which I will say is if you don't create a personal brand and if you create a business brand, then you don't have to worry so much about the like, oh, I don't want to talk about the same thing 17 years from now or whatever. It's like someone else is the, like being the like talking head on your like social media or whatever. And so someone else can do it. So yeah, it is definitely, so a few things. One, it helps. Two, it's hard to maintain that. If it's a personal brand, hard to maintain that same like excitement for that thing 10 years, 15, 20 years later. I think about Dave Ramsey. He's literally, I was watching a video today and yeah. it was like, um, yeah, he had been talking, he'd literally been getting the same advice for 30 years. And believe me, I'm sure he's bored sometimes, but like, whatever. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, there's pros and cons to it for sure. I've, I've been thinking about that because, um, my solution for that is like, well, find the thing that you're willing to talk about for 30 years. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and it's taken me about 10 years to get there. Um, but along the way, I'm like, Hey, I think when the time comes that the only thing you really need to talk about is X. And I was like, I answered myself like, okay, yeah, I could talk about that for the rest of my life because yep. people will need it for lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, well, that's kind of deep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you got to figure stuff out. You got to be willing to figure stuff out. And, you know, there's like a crucible effect of like no other way or no other choice, but mm -hmm. to like make this work kind of thing. Um, you don't necessarily need to be there, but you should anticipate if you expect a transformation in your life or in your reality, that that crucible will be there. So, um, how can someone prepare, <laughs> right? Who's maybe at that place right now where they're like, oh, I don't really know if I want to dip my toes into this. Um, and this is definitely not like a make or break season for me, mm -hmm. um, how can that person kind of like shift their mindset to see this as being like a, a resource or an asset that is there for them, mm. you know, in the event of an emergency? Yep, totally. I think that if you're in the place where it's like, I could do this or I could do that, or I could do, I don't know, there's 15 things I could do and I have a day job. And so I don't really need like this could work, this could not work, whatever. Um, I think that the best way to create that motivation is to do something you genuinely enjoy. Like when I got in Squarespace and I started building and redesigning my blog, it was just so much fun. So like, regardless of the fact that I literally had to do it once I moved, um, it was like, I also really loved doing it. And so I think that's also a key way to like make the motivation happen, even if you don't have the, it's kind of like the carrot, the stick, like then you're using the carrot, not the stick. Um, so Hmm. yeah truly like and it's fine it's fine when you're getting started with something new you can go try this you can go try that you can go try whatever yeah. um but just know that if you want to build a highly successful business you're probably going to do one thing um and so and you can expand over time but be prepared for a good few years like i was actually at um an event with create and cultivate like a few months ago it was a seven figure founder retreat yeah. and um it the one thing which I noticed, I made a YouTube video on this, um, of like sort of my observations of the event. The one thing I noticed was that literally all these women who had a seven figure business, the shortest amount of time that someone had done it for was like seven years. And the most was like 20 or 30. And so it's like, if you want to build a big business, do yeah. not think that this is happening. Like, I don't care what social media tells you. It is not typically a fast game. So do you want to stick at that? Of course, then the question is like, do you even want that? Maybe you don't. Maybe you're like, I just want some joyful, like side income of something mm -hmm. I enjoy doing. Amazing. Like it also building the biggest business in the industry does not need to be your goal if that's not what brings you joy. You know, it's funny you say that because I was in one of my notebooks and I found like a note I left for myself years ago where I was like, aha, it takes about eight years for you to fulfill your desires from start to finish. And this was like years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I look at everything, it is, it does pretty much line up to like, I have like some conception of a dream kind of state. And then it literally, if I, 
because I, I log everything, um, I can see, I'm like, oh yeah, that took about eight years to like really mm -hmm. come through. And then, so there's like a, a subtle science, I would say to, you know, this growth and transformation. Um, and I, I want to ask you about the transition from six figure solopreneur to mm. seven figure business owner and like w what that's like, you know, like um, how you experienced that shift and like the observations, like you said, that you've made along the way. So many things. Okay. So one took a long time was not, not a fast road. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, the, so the, the actual day to day of what you do from like, okay, there is a change. There is a change from like six figures. Like you could probably, you could definitely run a six figure business just by yourself getting to seven. You're definitely going to need some team, which then and maybe you could not, but I mean, I think in most, most cases, um, you're going to need that. And so that adds the entire complexity of like hiring, coordinating, managing projects, like just things being more complicated and taking longer and more people involved in a process and not the ability to make quick changes and everything. Um, so there's that in terms of interestingly, in terms of how it felt, like I remember the day I was like sitting at my desk, this desk opened up my like bookkeeping or something. I was like, Oh, I did it. I, I did it. And then I showed my husband. He's like, oh, cool. And that was it. And it literally, it made no difference. Like yeah. from slightly under to slightly above, it was like, yeah. it was the same thing as the day before, which yeah. just goes to show that like, I don't know, when you think that this goal, or you also hear about like Olympians who get the gold medal and then they're yeah. like, it's not that different. It's not that different. Um, so, yeah, but I think the other thing to realize again is like, is that the business you want to build? There was a period in time where I was like, I want to hit it. I want to hit it. I want to hit it. And then they were like, I was just having such a load of difficulties with like just team and people and whatever. And I was like, screw this. Like, I don't want to do this. And so I literally, I had decided like, I, I forgot exactly what the numbers were, but like there was two of us and we were somewhere in like the mid six figures. And then there was like five of us and we were just like, a couple more. And yeah. then I was like, so it was so much more annoying to operate and run. And mm -hmm. I was like, I, what, I don't want to do this. And so mm -hmm. I decided, I was like, I'm going to like, I'm okay with it being smaller and I'm okay with it being like not hitting that number because I like, if this is what it takes, I don't care. I'm not, yeah. I don't want it. Um, and then over time I realized like, no, you just need to like really have some like higher expectations and like choose people better and all those things. And that is the and then I could like hit the goal without sacrificing my life in the process. And so let me just say, it wouldn't have been worth it had I continued mm -hmm. it as I had been previously. And I wouldn't have continued going there, but only when I was like, oh no, okay. There was just like some more learning that happened to happen on my part um, yeah. of exactly when it comes to like a team and everything. That's when, yeah. That's really I, like, I love that process of like going with how it feels like. So from the beginning, start with something you enjoy that you mm -hmm. genuinely enjoy that you would do anyway so in the event of an emergency you know that there's this thing that you could do anyway um and do that thing and you know figure out what you need to figure out along the way um but this like uh eventually you hit a point where like things aren't working out the way you would like them to and you can't like force it you know you mm -hmm. can't like force it against your will or your nature or like what really feels good so you have to just like scale back to you you know mm -hmm. I, I always call it like going back to one I like to keep one in my mind as often as possible because that's where everything starts and it's easy to like try to rush processes and skip that but you know you come back to one and you're like okay maybe there is a way that is in alignment with me that feels better and I just had to like take some time like time was required to figure that out mm -hmm. um and that's you know a re recurring theme here now is like okay things take time um and different things take different amounts of time mm -hmm. and you know it's like you can go with that flow as opposed to going against it and it will you know bring you to new shores eventually mm -hmm. um <laughs> and you know the the shift of like whatever from six figure to seven figure business owner it's like I think what you speak on is like the um, 
the fact that there are these habits in place already, you know, where it's like eventually the numbers catch up or, but Mm -hmm. um, what's actually going on with you energetically is already there. Um, Give me like a little bit about mindset, right? So page in the beginning versus page now, like how has her mindset Mm -hmm. shifted the most? Like what has been that thing where it's like, aha, there was no specific aha. Mm. Um, there was just an exceptional amount of learning over time, I guess. Cause like truly having gone from like, I had never run anything to like, now I run a business. Um, yeah, it's going to be a very disappointing answer. I don't know. There was no, I mean, there's many things that I've I guess, worked through in my mindset over time. I think the hardest actually mindset point of the business was actually the very beginning though. Um, that was like, the amount of who are you there's other designers who are better why would anyone choose to work with you you're not gonna get another client whatever like that parade of thoughts was like a real problem um and working through the mindset of that like there was a few really good mindset books that helped me with that I was like I have never been so dedicated to like affirmations and replacing the thoughts in my head as I was at the very beginning um and I've actually never been as good at it as I was then but I think I needed to the most then (laughs) so yeah but I don't know in terms of and then in terms of mindset of like that's so I remember I'm in a mastermind and one of the girls had asked she there's like business owners who are in the multi six figures and into the seven and maybe multi seven as well. Um, and one of the girls had asked like, okay, I'm like ready to be a seven figure business owner next year. Like what's the mindset changes I need to make or something. Yeah. And, and then another person had asked like, what's the, and then what's the practical changes. And I think for different people, it's different. Like I think there could be a mindset thing blocking someone from getting to it, but it could also just be a practical thing. So I think it kind of depends on the person as to which is the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, for me, it was more just the practical, but I'm also just a very practical, logical person right. and I'm not so woo as some other people. And so, yeah, yeah. for me, it was more practical decisions that had to be made and marketing yeah. strategies that had to be found and business models that could actually reach that and all those mm-hmm. things. So, yeah. 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 So the beginning of like having to reprogram those mm-hmm. you call it the thought parade I, I like that because I can visualize it <laughs> <laughs> and like everyone's got like a card up that's like yeah you suck or like you're not that- it <laughs> who do you yep. think you are <laughs> exactly that's what was happening <laughs> <laughs> and like having like an army like a thought army come in and just like wipe them out and replace them oh um, my god that's even better <laughs> <laughs> um I in the beginning like I had to like reaffirm so much as well like of my own thought parade um and I said I always said to myself like like how impactful is that or whatever and like I'm like yeah that was pretty impactful I kind of want to provide that for people now because I'm like um if I was listening to some like affirmation thing before I went to bed like I think I could put people to sleep (laughs) (laughs) with like you are a money magnet or something yeah Um, I mean that's actually what it's called um, I've already started preparing. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, like there's there's the practical. And I, I think that there's always, you know, there's always two things happening at the same time. And it's like being able to to focus on the practical allows you to accomplish it. Mm-hmm. Um, but time is the thing that kind of governs the other thing that you have no control over mm-hmm. that um, you just have to like go with the flow. Um, the three paths, right? You can grow, scale, and become an agency, template, shop, course. Mm-hmm. Um, the course path, how much of that for you is like, I like to teach? Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't, I don't find, and as long as I've been in this like online business space, course is always sold as like, here's a way to make money and scale your business. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a reality of like, do you actually enjoy teaching? Like, do you have a a craft or an art or a sense of like um, being able to take information and make it digestible for people in an actionable way? How much of that was like a part of your consideration? It was definitely a part of it. Um, I definitely enjoy, like I would just find, I was, I don't know, at some coffee shop 
how did I meet this person? I was at some coffee shop and someone was like asking me questions about business and I just loved it. I was like, just like word vomited, like all of the advice and just am so like, when someone comes to me, I met a girl at cocktails the other day and she's like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this like calligraphy, um, wedding invitation business. And I was like, yes. I'm just so excited to like help her do that. I don't know. I just really enjoy that. And so that was definitely a factor though. Interestingly, because it is a pre-recorded course, it's like, I'm not teaching every day. That's not like actually the main, mm. interestingly, when you're a course creator, the main thing you probably do is marketing and not um, like the actual education side of it. So of mm. course I frequently, because I have tech courses, have to go and re-record different bits of that. And I have to say, re-recording your own course is not the most thrilling thing in the world, <laughs> um, but <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah, no, the actual, what I really enjoy is like we do Q and A calls once a month inside the course. And that is really fun for me. Um, yeah. I have a call co-coach who I do it with. And so it's just like monthly hangouts with Paige and Caitlin, basically like answering yeah. questions. And that's, I don't know, I find that really fun and helping people work through whatever their specific situation and issue is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I like that. Um, the the marketing that has to happen. So in my opinion, you're teaching through all of your, your, your content um, continually. <laughs> so- <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And that's one thing which I do love is content creation. Like that is a true joy. And I'm lucky that that is a joy because it's a huge part of my business. Um, I think you can not have it be a huge part of your business, but it is for me. And I guess that's true. It is literally teaching through some sort of video, podcast, blog post, whatever. Yeah. Um, and you're so you're continually answering questions, which means like, like, so lately I've been, I started a coaching program a couple months ago and it's like, kind of put me in the place where I really like to be which is like answering questions but very specific ones that <clears throat> sometimes require something very practical or sometimes we got to go like deep real quick and like the whole spectrum um and I've this is the first time where I've been able to like have the whole spectrum of what I do be what I do be my mm -hmm. work as opposed to you know a, a small narrow defined slice of the pie um, so it's been really fulfilling in that regard. And I find like, okay, now my job is to like put myself in front of that potential of like questions, you know, mm -hmm. um, in order to like keep going. So like I had a week this past month where there was nothing on my calendar and I was like, there's nothing coming out of me. Like what, I, like I need to fill this up again so that like, there's a reason for me to like, you know word vomit so to speak <laughs> um now i'm like okay maybe there's a course on my horizon mm -hmm. so so practically Love speaking this. um practically speaking like how how should i think about that where like i can think you know 9 18 months down the road and kind of have a mini roadmap for myself because up until now i've been very i guess seat, seat of the pants i don't know what they call it but like mm -hmm just like free falling for a long time and, you know, <laughs> building stuff on the way. Um, now I'm more intentional. I have to be, I have no other choice. And so how can I structure like a course business out of like the one-on-one -on -one coaching work that I'm doing now? Love. Okay. Do you yet know what the course topic will be or is that something where you're still trying to nail it down right now or? Yeah, I I think I'm probably still trying to nail it down. I think gotcha. overarchingly, it's like turning interest into assets. That's mm -hmm. like the core theme of what I do. Um, but I don't know. I don't know yet if there's like a, a very narrow part of that that is mm -hmm. more aligned with a problem someone is having. That's mm -hmm. where I'm like, you know, guided towards, as opposed to just like this vague kind of a. Oh, well, what does that mean exactly? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So one, you're in an exceptional position because you literally have coaching clients right now. And that is just like the best. You're literally getting paid to do your market research. And so that's amazing. And yeah. so I would definitely be very conscious of like, what are these people's questions that I'm getting the most frequently? And what are the problems they're running into the most frequently? Um, so one, that. Yeah. Um, and then two is like doing surveying your audience would be like massively beneficial mm -hmm. um, just to get an idea of like who is in your audience, what are the problems that they're having? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like your qualitative data or am I saying that the right way around? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's your quantitative data, right? Yeah. It's been a long time since I was in stat class. Yeah. 
That's the numbers one. The qualitative is, is yeah. Is yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So coming back to not needing intelligence to run a business, <laughs> not the most important thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have, so from your surveys, you'll get like the numbers data. And then from your yeah. like conversations, you'll get this sort of like more in-depth nuance. Like you'll just understand the person better and the thoughts that are going through their head and all those things. And so that's yeah. like literally when you write a sales page for your course, you're taking the exact thing, which someone told you, and then you're putting that back onto the page. And then they think yeah. she gets me, he gets me. And so like, voila. Yeah. Um, so the other thing, which I would say is like solving Going back to niche, one yeah. specific problem for one specific person. It's like if I had created a course on like how to run a service-based internet business or something, like that yeah. would be so much less powerful than what it is I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, and so I really think that something quite specific is really advantageous for selling a course. Um, and then once you've nailed the course idea, you're basically um what are you doing from there? You are <laughs> You already have an audience, which is great because that is yeah. the thing which people just skip every single time. And I'm like, I feel like I'm smacking my face into a wall when I tell you, like, I'm telling you to build an audience first, people. And they just like, don't listen. And then they go and do it. And then they don't sell anything. And I'm like, Ugh. like, come yeah. on now. I just said it. But anyways, um, I can't help that. <laughs> so yeah, then you're basically putting together a very specific offer. You can create it before, or you can not create it before. You can like do it live the first time if you want to. Um, benefit of not creating before is like you could basically sell it and then be like, okay, is this hitting the number of sales which I want to like actually, you know, run with this, or yeah. is it not? And do I need to go back to the drawing board? And I didn't just thankfully spend six months creating something. Mm -hmm. I will say that if you've done a good bit of market research and you've done a good a bit of talking to your coaching clients, that you're yeah definitely less likely to run into that, that situation than a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you're building it out. You are launching it. My Lord, do not go evergreen first. Um, everyone who I talk to is like, they want the dream. They want that yeah. I'm sleeping on a beach and sipping margaritas and just like sales or my online course are rolling in. And I'm like, mm. y'all, that is not the way that it is. Like, <laughs> um, So launching at least once, if not multiple times first, Yes. um is key because the amount of interaction with you get which you get with people during yeah. that is huge and then you'll realize like oh they didn't buy because there's no mm. this or no that or whatever it is um so that again it's coming it's like basically doing market research as you're like running your like sale event basically yeah, yeah. um so running some sort of a launch and then serving those students and then basically the ongoing once you've like gotten this thing you've figured out your product you've figured out your launch and everything you're basically launching and then list building and launching and list building and launching and list building. And of course you can add evergreen at some point, but yeah. I will say that um, I just look back, I was talking to a friend the other day, 80% of our revenue comes from launches and 20% comes from evergreen. Granted, yeah. I don't put as much effort into our evergreen. Yeah. So that could be like a factor as well. But I still think that I have seen, literally talked to one last week, um, a girl who like created a course and just like was, she has kids and she's busy. And so she's like, oh, I can't like launch things too much or whatever. And mm -hmm. so I'll just like evergreen it. And she took a course or program or something, which, which like helped her do. She's like, it was not worth the money. Like I did not make that money back. It was not like the promise sold and the outcome mm -hmm. were like two different things. And I've talked to two or three other people over the past like year or two as well, who've had the exact same situation. And so I yeah. will really say that like, you're, if you want to get into the course business and you want it to really be a significant revenue driver, it, launching is pretty essential. I'm sold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> especially just from understanding like the market research part. Um, so like your list building phase, mm. like how, how, how much are you growing your list in between launches? Is it like a thousand mm. subs, 5,000, mm -hmm. like numbers wise and time wise? interestingly okay so it's been very different so yeah. like sometimes sometimes it's like we've grown the list but then we've had unsubscribes and so it comes out to being the same list size as the last launch other times it's been like a couple thousand more mm -hmm. it really it's i mean we've done it for years now and so like our list growth is also not like a perfectly straight line or something yeah. um i will say interestingly is that you don't that's in, that's something which people don't expect is that if you already have a list you don't you can 
people are ready to purchase your product at different points in time. So people who have literally been following me for years by this time, for example, and I'll have conversations with them and it's like, oh, I've been thinking about it or I've been hoping to, or yeah. often I have a lot of females. And so it's like a lot of like, oh, I just had a baby, so it wasn't the right time. And so next year and blah. And so that's like a huge um, thing for my audience and age group specifically. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I don't know. People are just like, I don't know. The pandemic was also um, good for my business and good for many businesses because a lot of people got laid off from their jobs. And that was finally that coming back to what we talked about, like the, oh my God, I have to figure something out. A lot of yeah. people had that situation. And so a lot of people got laid off from jobs and then decided to like join and build their business. And that is something which like, I couldn't have influenced that. So you can sell to the same list, the exact same list multiple times and continue getting sales. It's not like everyone who saw it the first time bought the first time by any yeah. means. Yeah. Great. So these are all things that like are complete 180 degrees for me. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, I don't list build, you know, I don't, the only way people get on my list is if they buy a plugin, mm -hmm. um, which That's still I'm, a legit list builder though. Oh, no, don't discount sure. that. No, yeah. no, I don't. I, in fact, I, I put it as a premium because it's just a list of customers as opposed yep. to like people who are curious. Freebie people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I've always like known that, okay, at some point I have to turn on the, like the, the faucet on, like <laughs> you know, um, people who are just curious or interested, or I could serve some other way. Um, so that's something I'll have to turn on and I can definitely see how the work that I'm doing with like one client in particular, like I can scale mm -hmm. that work and it's exact, it's, um, it's fun, you know, cause it's it's literally the path of just like you just need one one you know to like kick it off and that focus really gets you going mm -hmm. um and it is along the lines of like creating a digital product mm -hmm. um because i've created like so many it's a, it's more for me i'm kind of like i'm not sure exactly what to prescribe for what scenario mm -hmm. or how i'm gonna navigate that but I can see how like every call is almost like a lesson or a, a, mm -hmm. a mini product of its own. So yeah, thanks. I, I I'm I, and I just got to like launch over and over again, which is something I've like resisted because I'm like, like my scarcity is the fact that I only care for a little bit of time. <laughs> 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 So, you have to do the same uh, with your course. You can be like, I don't know how long I'm going to run it for. <laughs> we'll see when I feel like doing something new. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, so yeah, I'm going to uh, leverage that some more. But yeah, cool. I, <laughs> you know, and I found the same thing as well, that there's people who, like, I find that the personal connection, like me as a customer of courses mm -hmm. or whatever, like if I, if the creator like responds to an email or a comment or something, um, I'm like a hundred times more inclined to buy than like, mm. if there's like no interaction, which is what a launch is. It's yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you like lay that out? And it seems like you have a, like a well oiled machine now of like being able to show up and then like take time for yourself so mm. you can like recharge and replenish. Um, can you just give me that little how that works for you because I think that's something that I need as well <laughs> when it comes to launching or when it comes to like day-to-day -day business all the time um, like launching slash day-to-day -day, like. okay gotcha um okay I'll start with launching um when it comes to launching and this is what I always recommend when people are like oh I just want to do evergreen because it's like too much it's like believe me I know what like the work that goes into a launch it is massive um because I literally did the entire thing by myself for like a good long time um but the thing which made launching so much easier is when I was like okay what can I only do and then I was like okay well because it's a personal brand only I can like show up to host the event and like answer the questions and do the live and the training and whatever and so I was like okay that's what I have to do in this launch and everything else can be done by someone else and so getting team members who can run all other aspects of it are is huge for it not being like oh I can't manage it or whatever um because yeah if it is just you doing every single thing then it's massive um granted I would say that it was like I did it just myself 
at the beginning. And I think that's good too, because you learn how to do every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's still beneficial. Like if one of my team members got sick or something happened or whatever, like I'm fully capable of going in and doing whatever needs to be done. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to launching over time, yeah, think about what you can only do and just do those things. And that makes it a lot better. Um, and then know that it's like an, the most insane emotional roller coaster you could ever expect. Um, and the longer you do it, the less emotional it gets. And it does get predictable, like yeah. over time. <laughs> what do you, what do you mean by that? Because I hear that sometimes and yeah. I, I'm sure it's one of those things that you just have to experience, but like, give me, yeah. you know, <laughs> you like have all these hopes and dreams and you're okay. so excited and like, and then for example, and you'll notice this, like, so when we have affiliates of our course, they especially if they haven't launched before, then they basically get to see like the entire back end of like what happens and how sales come in and all those things. And so before you launch a course, you just think like, oh, I'll just like get consistent sales throughout the sale week. And oh, then it yeah. happens. And then you realize like, no, we get sales on this day and we get sales on that day and get like nothing in between. And so for the like few in between days, if you don't already know mm -hmm. that, or you're not like emotionally prepared for that, or you haven't had that experience, you're like, it's uh, no yeah, one wants yeah. it. Like you're just having a crisis. Um, and so then when it's like, now I'm like, didn't expect that to happen today anyway. So like, if we got yeah. anything, that's a bonus, but that was not at all expected. Um, mm -hmm. So you just are a bit more like know what to expect. Yep. And yeah, it's just, it's just a really big, exciting period of time where there's a lot yeah. of things happening and you have high hopes. Um, I will say that, um, there was one year in my business where I launched my main course just once. Mm -hmm. And that was absolutely the wrong decision for me personally, because the mm -hmm. amount of pressure put on that, like one week period is insane. And yeah. you're like, oh my God, we've got to hit whatever. Um, and that is not very enjoyable. Whereas if you like have multiple launches throughout the year, it's like, eh, I literally, I think our launch last year in October, um, one of my team members said, she's like, I've never seen you. Like you showed up on those lives and you're like, it's a great course, but like you just, <laughs> you just had this vibe of like, it's incredible. Get in it if you want to, don't if you don't. Yeah. And I was like, huh, interesting. And I was like, you know why? Because we literally already hit our revenue goal by the time we even got to that launch. So I was like, anything on top of this gravy and I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so like there was no, like I need to hit something. It's like, mm -hmm. I need to hit nothing. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's launching. And then day-to-day -day business. Um, what? Um, I don't know. I think just at the beginning, like you have an unending list of tasks as a business owner, and there are so many things that you could do. And so I think over time, I've just like gotten really accepting of like, and I push that to next week, or I push that to next week, or at some point, if I push it too many times, I'm like, does this even matter? And I just check it off. Yeah. Um, and so I think also just having as well, like a spouse or children or whatever who like need you is probably also like very beneficial for like, not just like working all hours of the day and night. Um, and so I think, and also I find like whenever I'm home in the summer specifically, um, I just have so much, it's like such a intense social time for me. Cause I'm like, don't see my friends and family for most of the year and then go see them all once for like a month or two. And so that is like, I don't know, just like having a full personal life is a really good way to not let your business take over. <laughs> yeah. Got it. And yeah, the roller coaster, I get it now. Cause I've, I've seen the back end and of, uh, and it's like, you know, from, from in the, the audience has no idea what's going on in terms of mm -hmm. sales. Right. Um, but like to know that, okay, on the day that you think like, oh yeah, this message right here yep. is just gonna like light it on fire. <laughs> like, how can you not respond to this and no one responds? <laughs> yeah, then, exactly. Like, it's that <laughs> some, some casual some casual thing, like is the thing that like you know, hundred people respond to. Yeah. So I I get it. And yeah, and the more familiar you get with like, oh, okay, this is the part where we go, <laughs> this is the part where mm -hmm. we go down um you can you're just that person on the ride who's just like mad casual yeah. <laughs> <and everywhere. laughs> um yeah cool Paige this has been really uh I've learned a lot um so thank you um last thing for like w like what's the best um like the testimonial that you've gotten most recently from a student who that's just like got you lit up and excited where you're like yes I'm so excited that this happened um. for my student 
So many of them, like constantly. Um, yeah. I, okay, actually one, which my team member messaged me today, there's a girl named Jennifer who literally took my course like four or five, six years ago or something now. Um, and we had done like a student success story years ago. And one of my team members just messaged me being like, oh, Jennifer sent his message to let, me, let you know that she got a 20K project. And I was like, damn, Jennifer, good yeah. for you. Um, and so I think that's really exciting is also that's something really interesting is like, when you run a course like I do, which like requires like in order to have like student success stories requires just time for people like build businesses. Yeah. Um, it's really exciting to like catch up with people literally years later. Or we've also started doing like we do these student success stories, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Um, and then I also like now I've started like going back because there was like yeah. one um, who, I don't know, we just wanted to chat again. And so we did another one and just like catching up like a few years later and seeing where her business was at that point. That was also really fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but there's so many like the, like I can think of another one, Caitlin, she has three kids. She just had her third baby and she like literally crossed six figures working 20 hours a week with three kids. And I'm like, and she's just like, this is just the best business model. I'm so glad I found it um, yeah. and your courses. And so that's always really quite satisfying. Mm -hmm. Like I really enjoy doing those interviews because it's just fun to like catch up with them. And I know when you teach something and then you see people like really do the thing and don't and like really go for it. It's just yeah. really, that's, that's really fun. Yeah, that's exciting. So, um, yeah, I hope whoever's listening and is interested that they take the plunge um, and <laughs> get the experience for yourself. Um, Can I give them a next step? Yeah, sure. Do that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So if you are listening to this before the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of October, then you are in luck. We host twice a year, something called the Profitable and Productive Web Designer Bootcamp. It's basically the like free intro experience to figuring out how to run a web designer business. So if you're like web designer curious, or maybe you're even currently running a business, but you're like, it's a bit of a mess, or I'm not really sure I'm doing this right or whatever. Um, it's a really fun event. I host it again, just twice a year. So if you're listening before then, we'll put a link in the description where you can get registered. And it's basically a fun party in a Facebook group. And you can ask me all your questions and everything in there. So if you've ever wanted to like, be able to like literally ask the expert and also I have a bunch of my students coming in who helped me with this um and yeah it's like your opportunity to figure out and learn kind of like this podcast but like really fabulous so that I would definitely recommend we talk about finding clients we talk about the basics of setting up your business we talk about productivity and processes and niches and tons of stuff so if that sounds useful definitely register for bootcamp it's free <laughs>